Sometime in the late 1990s, a very rare and unusual action figure was posted for sale online. Like an uncontrollable virus, interest in the figure quickly spread throughout the collecting community. For most, it was a figure of mysterious origin whose existence they had not been previously aware of. For others, it had unlocked dormant memories of a past only partially remembered, witnessed through the fog of a dream. The memories of the collectors who were certain that they had owned the figure in the past were frighteningly similar. They could describe the figure from memory in precise detail. They remembered holding it, playing with it, but few could remember how they acquired it or the circumstances under which they lost possession of it. One collector swore that it came from a promotion offered in cooperation with Wonder Bread brand bread products, and to this day, the association with that loaf remains. Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is Wonder Bread He-Man. The figure for sale online that day back in the 90s appeared to be a variation of the standard He-Man action figure from Mattel's Masters of the Universe. The sculpt, country of origin stamp, and paint application were all consistent with products that collectors were already exceedingly familiar with. For all intents and purposes, it was He-Man, but with brown hair instead of blonde and black boots instead of brown. He was wearing the black variation of the armor worn by Zodak that was included with the accessory pack. He carried both the short maroon sword and axe as collectors would have recognized from the additional weapons that came with Manny Faces during his limited time weapon heavy release. Many collectors immediately dismissed the figure as a simple and pointless custom that any steady handed artisan could duplicate in an attempt to take advantage of fans who were less knowledgeable. Those who had owned it in the past, however, believed immediately that it was real and not only had they seen it before, but they had owned it. As the figure's exposure grew and more claims of legitimate figures surfaced, demand for an explanation intensified. How could it be real? How could it have escaped public awareness for so long? How could so many people have no knowledge of its existence while so many others could recount intimate details of their experiences with it? When asked, Masters of the Universe creators Mattel denied having any records or knowledge of the strange He-Man variation or any kind of action figure promotion with Wonder Bread. Could so many people have been so independently wrong about their own memories? The Mandela Effect refers to a phenomenon in which groups of people too large to be coincidental share false memories of past events. Some say it is a collective failure of memory. Others believe that it is the result of two divergent timelines with only the survivors of the original timeline retaining the memory. Is it possible this figure, like the people who remember it, are the survivors of an alternate universe where He-Man had brown hair instead of blonde? He-Man and the Masters of the Universe were born into pop culture consciousness in 1982 amidst a contentious copyright battle with Conan Properties Incorporated. Mattel had acquired the license to produce Conan action figures from CPI in July of 1980. In January of 1982, prior to the May 14th opening of the Conan the Barbarian movie, Mattel abruptly requested to terminate the contract. One month later, in February of 1982, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe were on toy store shelves. Two months after that, CPI agreed to terminate the contract with Mattel. In 1984, CPI filed suit against Mattel for copyright infringement, trademark infringement, unfair competition, dilution, breach of contract, and fraud. CPI claimed everything about He-Man was derivative of Conan and conceived while under contract with CPI, so all of He-Man's materials belonged to and should be delivered to them immediately. Quote, he-Man is just Conan in a blonde wig. Mattel counterclaimed against Conan Properties Incorporated, its affiliates, and their subsidiaries for fraud. Mattel argued that CPI could not own the basic concept of a muscle-bound heroic fighter battling against wizards and monsters. It was no more derivative of Conan than Tarzan, Beowulf, John Carter of Mars, or Hercules. The court battle would last five years before a judge finally ruled that Mattel was not infringing on CPI's Conan brand after pointing out that the original Robert E. Howard Conan stories were in the public domain and there was not enough physical or philosophical similarity for He-Man to in any way damage the Conan brand. But a deep wound had been cut by the legal action that would affect Mattel's creative decisions for the rest of the brand's lifetime. Mattel had to step carefully, making sure that all creative decisions continued to make a distinction between the two brands. The worst thing that could happen would be for a figure similar to Conan to suddenly show up in the line, undermining the conclusion of five years worth of litigation, likely resulting in the complete devastation of the brand and a huge financial windfall to CPI if shenanigans could ever be proven. Based on our research, there was a promotion between Mattel and Wonder Bread in 1986. Instead of a figure, it was a series of trading cards. Is it possible that this was the source of confusion for some collectors? 
Some claim to have purchased him during a buy three, get one free promotion, but due to a lack of records at Mattel and no verifiable copies of an order form or packaging, there isn't enough evidence to state with certainty that this is where the figure came from. In 2010, as part of their Masters of the Universe Classics line, Mattel paid homage to the mystery of Wonder Bread He-Man by producing Wondar, an official character with an official canon backstory tying together several elements of the He-Man mythos. Wondar was a protector of the Sword of Power 100 years prior to the birth of Prince Adam, with armor given to him by the Goddess of Eternia. He also comes packed with a loaf of bread in recognition of the circumstances behind the character's unfortunate naming. Fans have chosen to refer to the mysterious vintage figure as Savage He-Man as a nod to both his 2010 canon Wondar origin and his questionable evolution out of the original Savage Sword of Conan properties. Is it possible that Wonder Bread did ship out brown-haired He-Man figures to entrance in their trading card giveaway, or that it was part of an official Mattel promotion? Is it possible that this strange figure is the result of a customizer attempting to make a quick buck, accidentally setting off a chain reaction for a global hoax that has grown beyond their ability to control as hundreds of unscrupulous sellers trade in illegitimate goods? Is it possible that Wonder Bread He-Man is a remnant from an alternate universe Earth? If so, what other elements have changed around us and how many inhabitants of that other world survived? Has Mattel, as a result of their five-year battle with Conan Properties International, intentionally attempted to prevent the world from learning the real truth about the existence of this figure and its ties to Conan the Barbarian? Until more evidence comes to light or the timeline is somehow corrected, Wonder Bread He-Man, Savage He-Man, will remain an oddity of our reality. Thanks for watching. Please take a moment to hit like, subscribe, share this video. If you're in the position to be able to contribute, check out our Patreon and become a supporter today. Link is on the screen now or in the description below. And let us know in the comments which timeline you're from. I have vivid memories of Heenan and Battle Cat teaming up with a robot truck man to fight a giant sock puppet snake monster, but we may have just played with our toys differently. And I may have said too much. <laughs> Cut.